Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm your trainer for this Power Platform Fundamentals PL900 certification course. In this episode, we're going to learn how to build an automated solution. Let's have a quick look at the things what we're going to learn on this video. We will learn how to create a flow from a template and how to create a recurring flow on a schedule and a flow triggered by a button as well. And we will learn how to automate an approval request and discover the approval center. And we will learn how to create a business process flow. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. With the hundreds of triggers, actions and connectors, sometimes the hardest part about Power Automate can be figuring out where to get started. To help you get started, there are countless flow templates available to help you build a solution. So let me show you where you can find these templates. So first let's go to ms.flow.microsoft.com, sign in with your credentials. And this is a Power Automate Admin Center. On the left hand side, you can click on templates. From here, you can search by a specific word or a phrase like common data service, or you can browse based on category as well. If you click on a specific template, you will see the details about the template, including the data sources it will connect to. So templates are a great way for getting started with your Power Automate automation. So you can take a template and extend it to meet your business needs. So let's use this template to create a flow to save email attachment to OneDrive for business. Okay, now we are at the template which we can use to save Office 365 email attached to OneDrive for business. So I'm going to click on create flow. As you can see that connection to Office 365 Outlook and Wonderful Business is connected. And if you want to further modify anything, you can click on edit to see the details of what was created for you. As you can see that if you receive a new email, if there is an attachment, it creates a file and there is a condition as well. If the condition says that if there is an attachment, create a file entry. So if you want to further customize the flow and modify adding your own customization, you can very well do that. You can go and add an action or you can click on existing flow and you can modify certain actions or activity here as well. So if you don't want all the email attachment to be saved on the OneDrive for Business and which recipient's email you would like to save it on the OneDrive for Business. So it allows a great customization and you can add further more steps by adding more connectors or adding more conditions. So now let's understand some of the important concepts in Microsoft Power Automate. Every flow has two main parts, a trigger and one or more actions. You can think of a trigger as the starting action for the flow. The trigger can be something like a new email arriving in your inbox or a new item being added to a SharePoint list. An action are what you want to happen when a trigger is invoked. For example, a new email trigger will start the action of creating a new file in OneDrive for Business. Other examples of action include sending an email, posting a tweet or starting an approval. Some example or types of action you can have in a flow includes loops, switch, do until, apply to each and expressions. Loops run an action until connections are met to move to the next step of the flow. Switch identifies a single case to execute based on evaluation of input. Do until executes a block of actions until a specified condition evaluates to true. Apply to each executes a block of actions for each item in the input array. And expressions are underlying definition that describes the actual logic that runs in your flow that can be manually written. You can also perform data operations in your flow such as compose, create CSV table, join or select. These concepts will come into play later when you build your own flow from scratch. With Power Automate, you do not think of running a flow the same way as you do with running a Power Apps app. Instead, you perform the activity that triggers the flow to run. In the case of the previous flow, instead of periodically running the flow manually, it would automatically run every time a new email is received with an attachment. This is because the flow has the trigger that determines when it should run. 
when defining triggers you need to be aware of three different types the first one is when something changes these are triggers that run when data is changed it could be a new item created in sharepoint a lead is updated in dynamics or when an event has been deleted from outlook for example the next type is on a schedule you can set up a flow to be triggered at a certain time of a day and with a recurrence this allows for processes such as checking every day at 8 am to see if there are account renewals pending and if so sending an email to the necessary people and the third type is on a button press this trigger takes shape in many ways this can be when a flow virtual button is run through the mobile app or physical button is clicked with third party options or even when a button is pressed inside of a power apps so let me show you how you can create a sample flow in power automate so i'm on my power automate admin portal on the left hand side you can find my flows as you can see that there is one which is already available this was the one we did for the previous example so i'm going to click on new and i'm going to click on schedule from blank so this is where you can mention the flow name i'm going to call it as sample flow and you have few parameters as well when do you would like to start you can pick a date and you can pick a time as well and if there is any recurrence you can define the recurrence as well i'm going to click uh, i want to repeat it every week and i'm going to choose a day as well click create so this is a sample example of a recurrence flow now we can very well go ahead and add a new step and then you can attach to this recurrence flow and if you would like to specify some advanced options you can click on this same reference and click on edit and click on show advanced options the advanced options vary depending on the value of the interval and frequency field and this advanced option give you specify a time zone to reflect the local time zone or utc or any other time zone all right so that concludes this lesson in the next video we're going to do a quick knowledge check on all the things what we have learned on module 4 I will see you on the next one till then take care